ทัสสะภะคะวะทุวะระหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสนะโมทัสสะภะคะวะทุอาระหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสนะโมทัสสะภะคะวะทุอาระหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะอาภารุธาเดทังอมทัสสะทวาราเยสุรวันทาบามุจันทุสทังAlso, the the family、uh, summer camp week, and many people are here. And there's very uh, 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 hot weather, uh, so it's、uh, also something to contemplate with the existing conditions as they are, and then to、uh, recognize that our relationship to Whatever is in the present is one of uh, uh, harmlessness, mindfulness.、Uh, we're we're opening to the experience of whatever is uh, happening, uh, either externally、uh, or internally in our own minds. To to really be in this position of the buto, the knowing. State the state of awareness. This I think is very. Uh, the, the, this, it, so someone who's been meditating for many years,、uh, this becomes increasingly more clear. Uh, uh, this this state of awareness and the value of it.、Uh, so that's why. Here in the UK, the the where Buddhism is a relatively new phenomenon,、uh, and Buddhist meditation is something that is,、uh, you know, people are now beginning to、uh, have some benefits from their practice,、uh, insight, wisdom, understanding、uh, through the、uh, persistent and、uh, ongoing、uh, reflection on. The, The impermanence of conditioned phenomena. And the Tamajaka Sutta that we just chanted is,、uh, of course, the, the essential teaching: suffering, the causes, cessation. And cessation is uh, now, uh, as you as you develop the the pawana. The, Cultivate the way, then the experience of sensation,、uh, cessation becomes increasingly more clear.、Um, where, when we're in the beginning, we're we're mostly caught up into the 
uh, arising conditions and just the the momentum of habitual thoughts, emotions, uh, opinions, views, uh, behavioral patterns that we and reactivity that we uh, experience in this life. The aim of, of a religious path is to realize the ultimate, the deathless reality. So in the realization of Niroda, then we 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 have insight into the path, the eightfold path, based on right understanding, samaditi. So this word ditti is uh, in uh, is used uh, as a, you know as a, it can be right thought or in ter- in the, even in the Thai language they use it as a kind of like opinion view or even conceit. In Thai, when you say someone has a lot of ditti, it means they're very opinionated and conceited. <laughs> Uh, in Thai, they actually use the word ditti or mana ditti, a kind of self conceit. But sama ditti is, uh, is right view or right understanding, right seeing. Uh, it's, quite, it's profound, it's embracing, it's not, it's not uh, div- divisive. It's not based on on uh, delusions anymore, but on insight. And the tendency for for us to, when we think about Dhamma, oftentimes, is to divide the world into illusion uh, and reality. Or uh, the, the thinking mind is always making these divisions because of thought. And that's how it may, what thought actually does. And the function of thought is to divide and separate, to count, to qualify, to quantify, to describe, to to define, to limit. But the spiritual realization is unlimited. It's not it's not defined. It, it's realized. So that's why the uh, ultimate realization isn't is something that you can can describe or define or uh, you know every, t- every attempt uh, to try to describe it in, uh, in words uh, in any language it's uh, somehow not quite that so uh, and the Buddha made it very clear it has to be realized uh, and, and known individually by the wise, bhajjatang veti dapo inyuhi, to be experienced individually by the wise, to be realized, to be known, because it can't just having definitions and descriptions and ideas about it tend to delude us. Because uh, whatever we attach to, whatever view we have about ultimate reality, that view will in some way distort the experience because we, we, get, we get prepared uh, for seeing it in some way. We've got some bias, some little distortion uh, that we're using to experience the present and so ultimate reality or the enlightenment or realization is, uh, is impossible as long as there is any form of clinging to a view, to any form of ditty. And of course, the, the, the kind of ditties that we have are, you know, we form a lot of opinions and views about Buddhism and about um, Dhamma, about uh, monasticism, and about um, other religions, about ourselves about other people and so these are these are kind of conventional uh, uh, ways of thinking and and defining the conditioned realm though uh, the c- conceit of, of, of ditti mana is uh, is always thinking that because we know about all kinds of things that we actually understand them 
And so you, you, you get people who are very well educated and have, uh, you know, uh, degrees and uh, certificates and have written books and are considered authorities and experts. Uh, but uh, in terms of, uh, of spiritual development, it remains merely ditti or ditti mana until you let go of it all and realize the reality in the present. So that, that always the meditation, say the purpose of a meditative practice is not, if you're coming from the, the, the basic ditti that, del that distorts experience in the present is the, is the self-view. I am this body, I am my memories and feelings and thoughts and emotions. And the way we grasp the things around us, the, the external world, what we see and so forth, we, we, we get possessive, we, we identify, we hold to it. So in the monastic life, we're, you know, we kind of, uh, most of us aren't particularly uh, fascinated by having a lot of possessions and identities on the social or worldly plane or material plane. But our ditties can really be strong in terms of our station, our commitment, our practice, our view about practice our view about other people's practice, our views about Buddhism. And all these views, and nothing, and even the views are, may not necessarily be wrong in themselves, but it's the grasping of those views that, that is the distortion. Views are views, so they're appropriate according to time and place. Uh, they, and some are based on, you know, on... Uh, intelligent uh, reasoning and, and on uh, using language and dhamma and convention in a skillful way. But still, as long as one is bound to the convention, that blind attachment to convention, even no matter how good the convention might be, there's still a distortion. There's still uh, the ditty there that uh, that that uh, hides the reality. Uh, in the third noble truth, the Naroda Satcha, mm -hmm. cessation, this is where you, you're actually realizing non-attachment. You know, the second noble truth is the insight into letting go of the causes, the uh, gama dana, power dana, vipur dana. So this paha is the letting go, or not grasp, it is actually like letting go, putting down something. Not destroying, it's not a destructive thing, like getting rid of because it's bad, or it's not a a kind of judgment, value judgment against any convention or condition, but it's, it's the thing that the attachment, this, this blind attachment is, is the thing that blinds us to the reality of the present. And so this a sense of awakened awareness, the sati, uh, uh, the uh, appamado, the heedfulness, being heedful, paying attention, being awake is the way that the, the, the is the kind of essence of Buddha Dhamma. The Buddha, Bhutto, awakened awareness, wisdom, mindfulness. These are the the words that that have great impact on the on the uh, meditator. Now we can still. Uh, grasp these words and, and create uh, all kinds of Buddhas and all kinds of opinions about Buddha and and all kinds of views about uh, being mindful and so <laughs> and even though we have these words it's like uh, being heedful, paying 
paying attention, being here and now, and then we grasp the views of you must be awake, you must be here and now, must be mindful. Uh, and then that very grasping uh, is the thing that makes us heedless, even though we're grasping a view about mindfulness, or grasping a view about not grasping. So it's not a matter of, of, of uh, negating or just going from positive a positive view to a negative one, or taking a position uh, in terms of uh, a view, uh, a particular viewpoint as being uh, some kind of view as being absolutely right. But some dicti is is not grasping any views. It's the state of pure uh, pure being. They say in one book, a kind of ontological transparency. One kind of attempts to use words. <laughs> like transparent, not ontol ontology, you know, like the, the present in this, the study of being. Transparency, there's no, there's no, the, the, you know, there's no, it's not color, it has no color, no form, no shape. So it's, it's not something that you find or create. You can't create but mindfulness. You can't, it's not something that you, you, uh, you do, but something you, you be, you rest in it, you open, you relax into the state of receptive awareness, intuitive awareness. It's intuitive. And then uh, from that, then the, the samaditi is possible. Once you, you, you actually uh, trust yourself to be in that state of just, a, and, and in that state of attention, you're accepting everything for what it is, even your own tensions, your own negativity. Like if you're, uh, you know, the, the physical pain or restlessness or whatever, you're, you're experiencing now, the intuitive present is embracing, it's not condemning or, or making any kind of problems about what, what, it, what you're experiencing in the present. And that's quite an amazing ability, isn't it? To just try, because oftentimes we feel tense and then we, we, we start grasping the view that we should relax. And so we 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 try to get, we feel, you know, we, whatever, if we have bad thoughts in the present, then we think we've got to get rid of them. Or if, if we have, uh, you know, if we feel pain or, or negative uh, feelings, emotions, or whatever, we, we immediately uh, take the view that we've got to get rid of these kind of uh, conditions. But that's coming from the the uh, the conditioned mind, isn't it? The way you you part, you make judgments. You know, this is bad. This is good. This is this is how I should be. I shouldn't be like this. I shouldn't. This is a uh, you, and, and it's easy to. We have the Pali word. We say this is an asawa. This is a defilement. This is a kilesa. This is a uh, a sin. We can be very good at at, at naming. Uh, putting uh, some kind of word to the, the what we're feeling in the present and making some kind of judgment about it. But in intuitive awareness, there's, it's non-judgmental. That's why we say intuition. It's, it's embracing all that's present, all that you're experiencing, without judging it. Good, bad, pleasant, painful, uh, Peaceful or confused or light or dark, whatever. It's not. It's not. Not selecting. So one can understand this and even feel inspired, but 
but how to act, how to really practice in this way to make this to make this into a reality. And so, say in in our life here to Mabati to to uh, this this uh, particular situation is set up in order to encourage uh, and point to that and keep reminding us because we keep forgetting we it's easy to get lost in all the worldly uh, urgencies and problems and difficulties that we have and in communal life is a real challenge isn't it in terms of the the way we are living together and the way we affect each other you know, on the emotional plane and all the the uh, conventional things we have to uh, bend to and accept and and uh, embrace inevitably bring up all kinds of resistance or attachments or obsessions. So then the this is the, uh, qu- the this is the beginning of the quiet week for the com- for the monastic community. So it, it's uh, just to, to see this as opportunity in the, the quiet week where say the maybe the pressures of uh, communal life are are uh, not so great, not so strong. Isn't you're not forced or compelled. You're not uh, there's not expectation for you to be at the morning chanting or evening chanting or things like this and you have you can motivate yourself but say this is a this is a a, a wonderful opportunity for you to to uh, instead of setting up all kinds of of ideas of what you've got to do during the quiet week in order to to get something to to trust more in your ability to just be aware of say any compulsive feeling doesn't mean you don't have uh, you, you don't uh, need to do anything during the quiet week but to whatever whatever you decide to to um, how, how you're going to use this week to to um, really observe The kind of way of feeling, the, the, and, and not judging, just observe. This is this is the way it feels when when it's like this. This is the, when the pressure's off, or when I have time to myself. This is this is the way I feel. We have these various uh, meditation techniques, uh, sitting and walking practices, and so forth. These are helpful. Uh, ways of uh, disciplining and having something to do, uh, but the aim of these things is not to to be caught in in compulsively practicing, but in observing the compulsions, the uh, or the the laziness, or the or the uh, resistance. Or the or the kind of way one can excuse, make excuses, or or um, you know rationalize your yourself into justifying to uh, to justify your behavior. But trust more in the that which is aware of all this, all that listens and is aware of the way. The mind, your mind, tends to uh, react to experience, and as listening, uh, the sotavanta is not judging. It's not uh, not making. Uh, uh, and if you do tend to pass judgments, be aware of that, and also accept the the reactive habits you have to the experience, so, so that it, it's embracing and. But your your refuge isn't in the objects, but in the pure state of awareness. Now, to to realize that state, uh, to know when you're in that state of awareness, you can just by 
the, just the, just by developing the, the uh, just practicing in the state of just paying attention, listening. Because uh, the uh, ability to listen is a very is is uh, is quite expansive, isn't it? It's uh, when we're listening, we can listen to something in particular, or we can just be ha- have that state of just pure state of listening of attention. So then, all that is uh, heard is accepted in the in that openness. Uh, that open state of listening. If we're just concentrated on some particular sound, like a, what somebody is saying, that's concentrating on maybe a, a speech somebody's giving. But also we can we can just rest in the state of awareness. That uh, that expansive listening of the sort of wanta, which isn't uh, listening for anything in particular, but but a relaxed state of receptive listening in the present. So it includes all the sounds, including the birds and the wind and the uh, noise and the um, traffic and it's just not, not excluding, it's willing to to allow all, all that is present in terms of sound to be what it is. And then as we relax into the state of receptive uh, awareness, then we, we begin to detect the sound of silence. The kind of uh, n- uh, buzzing sound, kind of background that is, uh, that is uh, det- we, we don't tend to notice, and not aware of, usually. And we, we, most, even though it's it's a natural it's natural to us it tends to be like something that we've never really uh, recognized or or uh, seen other than maybe some kind of strange electric sound but it it, it works very well in terms of meditation because it's a sign where your mind is uh, kind of the the conditioning of the mind has kind of reached its edge it stops there like thinking will stop there. And then there's a a sense of being poised in a state of pure attention, pure listening, uh, which isn't listening, which which isn't trying to uh, absorb into the sound of silence, but using it as a, as something, as like an edge to, uh, to rest in, a kind of, a balanced place where your uh, ability to really uh, be totally receptive and, and in an expansive way in the present is, uh, is, is, is realized through that. And as you relax with that more and more, then you also can reflect on the Conditions you're experiencing, like emotional reactions or, or thoughts, because that sound, the sound of silence or that emptiness of the mind, isn't an annihilating. It's not a. It's not an annihilation. It's not a rejection uh, of anything. It's not going into a kind of void of, of nothingness, of blotting out all conditioned experience. That's not. It's not annihilation. But it's uh, an, an ex- or the realization of emptiness that that embraces everything, so that all the other sounds uh, are within that, or even even uh, the old sound can can take you to that sound of silence, and as you develop uh, heedfulness around the sound of silence, then, then your relationship to the sounds, or to even the, the internal sounds, like the inner voices, the, the emotions that you're feeling, the, the, uh, the thoughts and views, the ditties that come up in, into your consciousness, you're, you're now 
willing to let them be what they are. So you're actually letting your mind kind of free itself from this endless controlling, manipulating tendency to based on fear, based on ignorance, based on desire. Because when you're caught in the self view and in the in the in the wanting to control everything because you're frightened of life and experience or frightened of of your own feelings or emotions or thoughts and that then one is continually resisting, you know, trying to to uh, as soon as any any uh, frightening thing starts coming to consciousness, we, we try to uh, get rid of it, run away from it. But in this n- state of natural awareness, then the then even the most frightening emotional uh, things can are allowed. You know, they come up. They they if they they are what they are, but, and your relationship to them is is knowing them in terms of impermanence and not self. The conditioned phenomena, anicca, dukkha, and they're, and you're letting them be what they are, so they naturally cease. And as you trust in your ability to let things cease, and rather than just when when things get rough to kind of rush off to do something else, that's what we call rebirth. Isn't it? Where we, you know, well, we get some frightening thing coming up, and then we oh, can't take this, and we run off and do something, keep busy. Uh, write letters, read books, run around the field, turn up an old friend. These are what monks and nuns can do. We don't have television. If you're a lay person, you've got television, you can immediately switch it on. Also, the subtleties of of negative feelings and repressed uh, desires and that are are allowed then, rather than judged or controlled, as from this this place of sotavanta, then you, the listener, intuitive awareness, then then you can uh, deal with the uh, uh, with these. With subtleties, with stupidity, with with uh, all kinds of uh, inferior uh, emotional habits or immature emotional habits that we might have. You know, we're, we're very good at judging and say this person has immature emotions, and so when they get upset, they start throwing a tantrum, won't they? When they uh, can't get their own way, then they act like this, or <laughs> or they. Uh, I mean, we have, we're very good at kind of analyzing people, putting labels on that they have uh, problems with authority, or they have uh, problems with their mothers, or the problems with uh, and we, these kind of uh, this way of thinking tends to. Uh, make it sound like we shouldn't have these problems. And therefore, there's a, a tendency to, to feel, to, to try to, to solve all these problems. But, uh, the, but then the problems keep, keep multiplying all the time. Uh, so that, uh, you by, because the basic, basic, uh, problem has not been resolved, which is attachment to the conditioned realm, or the ditti, the attachment to these various uh, mana dittis. So you can be quite cavalier in these little uh, immature emotions, or big m- immature emotions start coming up, and you, you say, welcome, temper tantrums. Uh, I mean, not that one has them. I mean, you know, you don't, you don't see me going around usually having temper tantrums. But uh, 
still uh, the, those kind of emotions can one can experience. So they come up, and the the, the attitude towards them is rather than than uh, trying to get rid of them, seeing them as as uh, my problem uh, being uh, not resolving my immature uh, habits from childhood traumas. I begin to to accept the and you kind of welcome these emotions into consciousness. It's like you're 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 being a host, uh, a generous receiver without judging and without making any conditions about it. It's like unconditioned love. And then these these emotional habits, once they if they have no resistance, no, and you're not creating problems around them out of ignorance, then they actually are being liberated from your karmic uh, storehouse. At least I find that in the, this way, the, the uh, kind of tendencies, uh, inadequate tendencies, are, are, uh, can, be, can be reduced, can be uh, let go of as I stop trying to to control it. With uh, with all of us in you know in in a society like this one here, uh, where say we have uh, a lot of you know say we haven't really uh, been we have a lot of freedom when we have rights and and uh, opportunities and and material abundance and things like this to uh, to uh, that we almost we, we take for granted you know the kind of pri- privileges of a democratic system and and material uh, wealth materialism modern life and so uh the, this this kind of uh, uh, cult, uh, acculturation that we've had, say, it tends to to have its own problems. You know, we, we we sometimes we we can bypass difficulties. We can get by in in this society quite easily without putting much effort into our lives. Uh, we can just kind of ride along, and uh, and we can. Uh, become obsessed with ourselves and in our feelings and our thoughts and and become really self-centered and very selfish because uh, the in modern society for, for many of us life has allowed this kind of luxury uh, to be self-obsessed to be uh, obsessed with one's views one's opinions one's feelings Now, how to y- use this, you know, in terms of Dhamma? Because in the monastic life, you know, we're all here uh, because we want to be free from this pain because selfishness and self-obsession is a very painful uh, way to live one's life. And then to always, because it imp- it's always separative and it's critical and it's, uh, and it's always, it, one is so caught in, in endless comparing, uh, comparisons, and jealousies, and envy, and self-disparagement, and and uh, embarrassments, and self-consciousness, and and arrogant attitudes, and conceits. So that that kind of of uh, uh, conditioning just uh, creates, even in a modern and pleasant society that we live in creates a, a lot of anguish and despair and fear uh, even though they kind of uh, their dangers aren't particularly immediate you know you're not on, on a survival level you don't have to worry about you know wild animals attacking us and and uh, just trying to get enough you know a few grains of rice uh, to survive the next day Sometimes, you know, when you're really uh, hard-pressed, life gets difficult, and you're just on the survival level, you, you don't have time to be neurotic. 
you got to go <laughs> try to find a, a crust of bread or something to 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 uh, survive with, and you don't have time to feel sorry for yourself. But in modern life, we can we can indulge in, in ourselves in uh, these self obsessions. Now this can also be a good thing if we use it in the right way because like say here in the, in the monastery it's very, very well, you know, it's provided for in, in life if Ayat isn't isn't survival on the level of just not, you know, getting enough to eat and, and not having, you know, just barely making it on the level of survival. But in terms of emotional uh, experience, isn't it? Sometimes it's it's difficult to survive because we are living in a community where where we you know we we're we're altruistic, we're we're moral, we have a lot of good qualities. Uh, we're we're here, we're spiritually aspiring, you know. We're we're all uh, you know. It, quite, quite good. Our intentions are good, and our aspirations are, are, are for realization, for enlightenment. And yet, how much anguish we we have around the say jealousies or envy or, or just the feelings about being misunderstood or not loved or not respected or, or not appreciated or. Be, we get paranoid. We think people don't like us, or people are against us, or people trying to to uh, take advantage of us. All these kind of emotions uh, can uh, are quite ordinary in a community uh, existence. So the Soda Wanta listens to this. You know, this is how I train myself to just listen to the the anxieties the the fears, the the, the 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 sense of responsibility, uh, the compulsive tendencies I have, the desire for approval, uh, the the uh, uh, longing for people to understand the dhamma, the the um, you know, all the kind of things that that you have, you know, that wanting, you know, that you got committed yourself to. Uh, to this particular way of life, and then, then th- that also brings up emotions of wanting uh, people to appreciate it, or wanting people to understand. And so these also, these kind of desires and these ditties are part of the uh, path. And so in terms of Dhamma, it's all, we're seeing these things not in terms of of personal uh, defects, but as developing the path. So all of what you might consider your personal defects and your uh, inadequacies and your uh, problems uh, on that level, is rather than seeing them in that way, see them as the as the all that all the dhammas that need that keep reminding you of the path. So then, in the state of awareness, then the, the, all the, the immature emotions arise. I feel upset because people uh, uh, say somebody uh, sa- uh, criticizes me unfairly, and uh, and then being criticized unfairly, then this emotion of it's not fair, it's not right. They should. Then, then the sort of one time listens and this emotion then is accepted. It's not it's not believed, I don't believe it. It's not in in uh, believing or in resisting it, but in accepting and allowing it to be that way. And then it, it naturally ceases. It's it's uh, it's uh, something that that is always helping you to realize the path. And this, if you change your, your attitude rather than from the self view, which is a good monk uh, shouldn't have thoughts like this, <laughs> or a good nun 
uh, shouldn't uh, you know be like this and all that the way that then we're we're actually using the conventions of monasticism to develop the uh, to increase the sense of a self and to and to increase the, the self disparagement because you you know a good nun a good monk is you know is uh, it can be you know very high standard uh, that we we would like to become and uh, and then we just uh, endlessly feel we're failing or we're not good enough uh, and because we can't maintain ourselves at this high standard that we that we're attached to but in this state of awareness then it the the high standard the uh, the emotion the immature reaction the whole thing the in intuitive Awareness, it's, it's embracing the totality of it. It's not, it's not making a problem about the problems. So all problems and, uh, you know, as, you know, views that are very high and, and altruistic or, or just petty, selfish, mean-hearted, opinions and views or whatever they might be in their quality, they're all, uh, when we see them in, in terms of Dhamma, then it's all path, it's the samaditi of not having a view, but seeing directly the way, the, you know, seeing the path as a present, uh, here and now, timeless, and trusting that. And only you can know that yourself. And 